this video tutorial is about the shoulder girdle. We spent a lot of time uh, over a few months in some of my classes covering the shoulder movement and the biomechanics of the shoulder and what it should feel like. Oh, I'm just trying to avoid that light glaring. Um, and I would like to run through that here because I think it is such a good practice. There are so many of you out there who have biomechanical issues with your shoulder that you cannot lift your arm up next to your ear and get it close to the head, not with extension. This could be a variation, I mean, it could just be so many different things. What we want to make sure of is that we are stretching the lat, the lat that connects the arm to your spine and goes all the way down onto your tail like a big V. Um, this teres minor muscle might be really, really tight. We need to make sure that the bones are moving biomechanically correct. And so that is the one I'm working on today. So the first thing I like is the breathing exercise. And I really have to thank a lady called Lisa McCulloch um, for this because she's amazing and her work is fantastic. Somatic anatomy, that's her, her page. So if you walk your fingers along the front of that collarbone to the chromium process, that's the end of the shoulder, and come in about an inch and down about an inch, and there's a little hollow there in the front of your shoulder. And I just want you to take a nice big breath in and when you breathe out, just feel that space widen. Just let those shoulder blades widen. And again, breathing wide into the base of the ribs. And breathing the air out and just letting that space stay nice and soft and wide. And that, what you're feeling there now, that's kind of a space you want to be in a lot of the time. I don't want to be pulling my shoulder blades down. I don't want to be pushing them around. I just want my shoulder blades to be free on my back to move because when my arm bone is moving, we're doing all this force, all this lifting and cleaning and <laughs> whatever we're doing with our arms, which is attached then up to the shoulder. If the collarbone and the shoulder blade at the back are not moving very well, then that whole ball and socket joint, because the humerus becomes the ball, you've got your clavicle on top and you've got the scapula at the back, making up that socket. If they don't get out of the way when this humerus bone lifts, if that collarbone doesn't get out of the way, then it crashes into each other and starts to rub and, and then we also get the, um, you know, the repeated, repetitive injury, repetitive strain injury because it's just constantly doing the same thing and we're never getting out of the way. So this, this was a little exercise to practice making sure that you've got that right. You're going to place one hand on that collarbone We've done our breathing exercise and just let that space widen. Now we're going to take that right arm, it's going to be, or whichever arm is out to the side, we're going to take it out to the side, more, uh, not too far forward, but not too far back either, just a nice diagonal and lowering it. What we want to sense under this hand is that when the arm is coming up, there is movement of the collarbone. The collarbone is rolling out of the way and then coming back down. If we're carrying all this tension here, it will hold that collarbone stiff. So try and let that be nice and soft, let the collarbone move out the way. And then that golden rule is that the shoulder blade follows the hand. So if my hand is going out to the side, my shoulder blade should move out to the side and come around the side of those ribs and then come back down and then it'll probably nestle back into the spine a little bit more. I'm going to show you that again. So that shoulder blade is going out to the side. I'm going to come forward. And then it's coming back towards the center line. For some of us, if you could see yourself in the mirror, you'll notice your shoulder blade actually wings when you come up. You'll see it's like stuck back here and it's making nobbles and come back down rather than the alternative, which is it's moving out to the side and coming back down. Okay, when your arm goes forward and up, that, that's, that shoulder blade, if you put your hand on the spine of the shoulder blade here, that's going to sort of lift its little face up to the ceiling. It tilts. This point is going in and this is going up. And then we release it and then its face comes down. So the shoulder blade does that, and the shoulder blade does that. 
and you just want to let yourself become aware that there is movement on your back that you have the shoulder blades not going in towards your spine every time you lift your arms but that there's space and the shoulder blades are going wide across your back yeah because otherwise these muscles in the middle here these rhomboids they get really 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 tight and the upper trapezius starts working too hard because the lats are then getting to it all just becomes really dysfunctional and one thing leads to another but if you can start with a really basis of what your biomechanics of your bones are as you are moving yeah let the collarbone roll back let the shoulder blade come around the side and then the humerus bone won't bump into anything on its way up <laughs> happy practicing then actually no i'm going to take that one step further I'm sorry about the light answered there. Right, let's do that exercise. I'm gonna do it with the same arm that I was practicing with. So I've got that shoulder blade coming out to the side, right? I'm making sure that he's come around the side. Now I'm gonna take the arm forward without that shoulder blade moving, bend it to a right angle in front of the shoulder, support it with his hand. And now I'm gonna to start to rotate that arm in and rotate the arm back out without the shoulder blade moving. And again, rotating it in and rotating it out. So I'm trying to keep that shoulder blade still, elbow still in front of me. And what we're doing here is just kind of hitting the reset button on your rotator cuff muscles. And the rotator cuff muscles are the ones that keep that humerus bone, the upper arm bone in the middle of your shoulder joint. Because really, isn't that where we want it to be? And then bring it back down. And actually, if you look in the camera, aside from the fact that my one shoulder is lower than the other because that's <laughs> due to my scoliosis, you can actually see that this shoulder is sitting further back, rotated further back than this one, because I've done the exercise with this one and not with this one. And it's kind of pulled that shoulder, that humerus bone back into position. Definitely give it a go, guys. If shoulders are your thing, give it a go. Good luck. Or, and hey, and message me. I'm, I'm at home too. So message me if you have any questions, if I can help you. If you want to do a video chat, we can do that and I can talk you through it and help you out.